Okay, so Nintendo just uh, finished their Nintendo Switch presentation, which they're supposed to tell us the release date, the launch date, everything we need to know about the Nintendo Switch, new games. So yeah, let's just jump right into it because there's a lot to talk about. So first, we have Tatsumi Kimishima, the president of Nintendo, coming out uh, to make his first debut in a Nintendo presentation, which I think is the first time we've seen him. Uh, since you know the unfortunate passing of Satoru Wada, but hopefully we'll see Tatsumi Kimishima in the future because you know He's the new face of Nintendo So yeah, uh, moving on uh, right off the bat We got the launch date and the retail price for the Nintendo switch So the Nintendo switch is coming out March 3rd of 2017 which is less than two months away Holy crap guys less than two months away. We're getting the Nintendo switch released to the world and I'm thinking why they made it so early like March 3rd is because you want to give like a month of sales to boost their fiscal year uh, records because I think the fiscal year for Nintendo ends on uh, March 31st so March releasing on March 3rd will give it like one uh, month of sales and uh, the retail price in Japan is going to be 29,980 yen and in North America it's going to be 299.99 US dollars which is you know what most people predicted I thought it was going to be 250 but you know 299 is still a good sweet spot so I'm not complaining about that <clears throat> and they also confirmed that there's going to be online multiplayer gaming which you know sh should be a given considering all modern consoles should have online services and they also said that smart devices can connect to Nintendo switch uh, to use their online services as well which is pretty cool as well and the one feature that I'm really excited for is Nintendo switch games have no region locking do you know how big that is like most games from Nintendo, uh, you can only buy in North America or Europe and Japan because that's where you live and that's where the game is sold. So if you have a game in Japan that you couldn't buy before, you can buy it now. Say like Attack on Titan came for the Nintendo Switch and it only released in Japan. Normally you wouldn't be able to get it because it would be region locked in Japan. But with no region locking, you can just import that game from Japan and you can play it on your Nintendo Switch in North America or Europe or wherever you live. So that is amazing. Like no region locking means you can play games um, anywhere from the world that they're released. So you can play games from exclusively from Japan or Europe or North America. So that's pretty awesome. Now moving on to the Nintendo Switch itself. Uh, they did say that the battery life varies uh, by game and they said the range would be 2.5 to 6 hours which is quite a large range in my opinion. Uh, 2.5 hours being really short and six hours being pretty long um so averaging that out you know hopefully nintendo switch gets 3.5 to 4 hours so hopefully we'll have to see what you know testing with the nintendo switch but i'm hoping that battery life is upwards of four hours because if it's less than three hours then it's just not gonna work because the nintendo 3ds right now has around three hours of battery life and that's cutting it close so hopefully we can get three hours or more uh with the nintendo switch um, they also said that you can play while charging the tablet with USB-C, which is a good plus. USB-C, you know, um, the newest USB technology. Uh, the screen is capacitive touch and also has Wi-Fi. And you can use up to eight Nintendo Switch consoles to be uh, used for local multiplayer. So it seems to me that they're really trying to make people get out of their house and use, bring their Nintendo Switch with them. You know, bring it with their friends. Uh, at a party, you know, up to eight Nintendo Switch consoles and play local multiplayer, which is pretty awesome. I like that they have this local multiplayer feature because not everywhere you have Wi Fi, you know. And sometimes you want to play uh, with your friends, and you can do this up to eight Nintendo Switch consoles with local, mul with local multiplayer. Uh, now, they did take some time to talk about the Joy Cons as well, and the Joy Cons have quite a lot of hardware inside it. So, each Joy Con has an NFC reader, uh, which has support for Amiibo. Now, I have uh, the original 3DS and I don't have a Wii U, but I know that a lot of people have bought Amiibos, especially for Super Smash Bros. So, this is just another way, you know, I knew that with the Joy-Cons they would have some kind type of NFC support because there's no way they're going to throw out Amiibos. And Amiibos have been so successful for Nintendo, they sell like millions of those every year. So, it makes sense that they would have... Um, Nintendo Switch would have support for Amiibos. And they also said there's a button on the Joy-Cons to uh, capture screenshots initially, but later on in the year, you can use it for a video recording to share on social media, which is pretty cool. So hopefully, maybe you don't need to like mod your Nintendo Switch or um, get an Elgato HD 
recorder to record Let's Plays or something. Maybe you can just record with the Joy-Con and you can just upload it to YouTube or something. That would be pretty awesome. Hopefully that's true. And uh, also the Joy-Cons have accelerometers and gyro sensors uh, in each, which basically means that the Joy-Cons can be used like Wii remotes for motion control. And they also showed uh, they have uh, red and blue colors for the Joy-Con, which comes with the system as well. And they're going to be more colors for sale. Again, you know, selling accessories is going to be at least like 30% of what Nintendo is going to make on the Nintendo Switch. And they also showed two new games that were going to be made for specifically for Joy-Cons. Uh, so the first one they showed is called 1-2 Switch, which makes use of the Joy-Con HD Rumble, which is supposed to emulate like you holding a glass and you can feel like ice cubes being dropped in the glass and water being poured into the cube, into the glass as well. I'm not sure how well that works. We'll have to see when we get our hands on the Nintendo Switch itself. Um, but basically it's a game where you play while facing another person and you, it's a bunch of it's just a variety of party games like we saw in the trailer like two cowboys using the joy cons uh to shoot each other and like the first one who pressed the joy cons first uh would win so yeah it seems like a pretty cool party game um i'm not really that excited about it but i feel like a lot of people would bring it to parties it seems like the nintendo switch's version of we uh we sports in my opinion and uh, that releases in March 3rd, 2017. So basically, uh, releases on launch day. Now, the second game I am much more interested in, which is called ARMS, which basically is a boxing game, but using Joy-Cons. So you use the Joy-Cons, you put uh, one Joy-Con in each hand, which you can use to punch, grab, and block. And it's like a combination of boxing and shooting because uh, when you punch with the Joy-Con uh, in the game, your arms stretch to hit the opponent. And you can use the Joy-Cons to like move, dash, and jump um, around. So I could see uh, this game being have a potential community, a uh, competitive community, uh, depending on how the game is played, because it seemed pretty intense just from watching that short match in the presentation. So maybe we'll see like a competitive community come out of arms. We'll have to see. Uh, but what I was wondering with this game is if you can play with the Joy-Con grip or the Pro Controller as well, because we just saw. Um, people playing with the joy cons in each hand because if you can play with the controller then I guess it has more viability competitively because I mean if you're using um, playing arms competitively then you would probably use the pro controller instead of using motion controls anyways that looks like a pretty cool game and that's coming out uh, spring 2017 now next we had Splatoon 2 now I don't have a Wii U so I've never played the original Splatoon but um, Splatoon 2 is coming out for Nintendo Switch, which is a very popular first party game. And I think all it's new is uh, dual guns. And you can uh, play using the Joy Cons, you can play with the controller, and you can play in handheld mode as well. And that's coming summer 2017. Now, the next game, this got me so hyped up Super Mario Odyssey. I just love new Mario games on Nintendo platforms. And this one does not disappoint. This is by far. Uh, the best game I've seen in this presentation. So I really wanted to see Super Mario Galaxy 3 for Nintendo Switch, but this looks like the closest thing we're gonna get because Super Mario Odyssey looks like a combination of Super Mario 3D World and Super Mario Galaxy. And just looking at the trailer, the graphics look so beautiful. Like definitely a big jump from the Wii U or the Wii. And uh, one thing I, sound, I found cool about the trailer is that uh, Mario can uh, throw his hat and it floats in midair and he can jump on it as a platform and we see after the trailer that Mario's hat has eyes so it's actually a living being I'll probably be explaining the game and um, they also said that some levels look like pl um, places are modeled after places in real life because there was this one level where it looked like the, it was straight from New York City so yeah I'm super excited for Super Mario Odyssey when I get in, I might just buy the Nintendo Switch just for Super Mario Odyssey and that's coming holiday 2017. So we're getting this trend where so far that most games aren't coming out on launch date. Like the only game so far that's coming out on launch date is 1 2 Switch. Uh, next we have uh, Xenoblade 2, which is, um, I guess, a sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles for the Wii U. And I haven't played it, but the, it definitely looked very beautiful. A definite upgrade from the Wii U. And we did not get a release date for that. Uh, next we had Fire Emblem. Warriors and we just got a slight teaser trailer for it and also we don't have a release date on that and uh, The last first party game we saw was Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 
which did get a release date, which is March 3rd, so it's getting released on launch date, which is awesome. Since um, Legend of Zelda has been delayed for so long, finally we're going to get the game coming out on March 3rd. And uh, for the new trailer, we actually saw a female protagonist that looked like a female Link, so we didn't see a Zelda, which is interesting. Now, uh, funny thing, um, I actually haven't played any Legend of Zelda games before. I bought uh, Ocarina of Time for 3DS. Uh, on Christmas so I could play it but then I realized after I bought it that I can use Ocarina of Time to get homebrew on my 3DS so I'm just like okay I guess I can't play Ocarina of Time now because I'm going to use it for homebrew so yeah maybe I'll play uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild when that comes out for the Switch. Uh, moving on to third party games because they did spend a lot of time on third party. Um, they said that there are going to be over 80 games in development currently uh, by third party and we got to see a few uh, third party representatives talk about Nintendo Switch. So first one we got is Square Enix uh, where they showed uh, Dragon Quest 10 and 11 and Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2 for Nintendo Switch. Uh, so all I have to say for this is rest in peace Hunter Hunter fans including myself because there's no way that Togashi is ever going to finish Hunter Hunter the manga. He's never going to end his hiatus and finish the manga as long as Dragon Quest continues pumping out new games. So rest in peace to all Hunter Hunter fans including myself. We're never gonna get the ending to Hunter Hunter. That's all I have to say for Dragon Quest. And uh, they also showed um, uh, some new games coming out. Uh, a Shimigami Tensei game and another game. I can't remember the name of it. But they did show it had Unreal Engine 4 and looked pretty nice. Pretty nice. So showing more of the Nintendo Switch's uh, graphical prowess. Uh, next we had Sega and all they basically said was that they're interested with the opportunities on the Nintendo Switch but they didn't really show a game for the Nintendo Switch. But what I really want to see is the Sonic uh, game coming out in 2017 for Nintendo Switch because that's what's going to hype me up. Sonic, like Sega, bring Sonic to the Nintendo Switch. It's going to sell millions, trust me. Now next we have Bethesda uh, they said that Skyrim is coming to Nintendo Switch, which is, you know, kind of expected since we saw that in the initial trailer. Um, a representative from Grasshopper spoke as well, but I couldn't understand shit because uh, Nintendo's translator completely fucked up the translation. I didn't, had no idea what he was talking about, so I couldn't, I have no comment on what that guy had to say. Uh, next, EA. So, they did say that they're going to bring some sports games to Nintendo Switch, spe specifically FIFA. So, you know, all you FIFA fans, you, um, you, that, you have looking forward to that for Nintendo Switch. I'm more of an NBA fan, so if we can get NBA 2K17 for uh, Switch, that would be pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, they sh at, the, at the end, they did show some quick compilation of games that will be coming to Nintendo Switch. Um, supposedly, they're probably going to be fir their first and third party games I saw, and... They're probably being developed for Switch right now, but they can't release any info like release date and stuff like that. So, yeah, a bunch of third-party games I saw in there, but a few that caught uh, my eye was Minecraft, uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, uh, Sonic 2017, Mario Kart, and Street Fighter. So, yeah, it looks like there's going to be a lot of games coming for the Switch, but it looks like this presentation, they, they couldn't tell us much. Like, over 80 games being developed for Switch, but they only showed like five or six third parties. Like, come on, Nintendo. Anyways, um, lastly, they showed what the package will include when you buy a Nintendo Switch, which is the Nintendo Switch tablet, uh, the dock, Joy-Cons, the Joy-Con grip, uh, Joy-Con straps, and the charging cable. So, yeah, that's what you get. All of those stuff for $2.99. So, what are my thoughts about this uh, presentation? So, firstly, again, uh, the $2.99 price point seems like a good sweet spot. I was hoping for $250, but I guess with $299, it's still less than $300, so it's still like fairly priced. And with $299, we can hope that the Nintendo Switch has better specs than what we uh, assume because Nintendo's trying to make a profit. And if it's $299, there's a high ch her chance that like better hardware is put into the Nintendo Switch. I'm just hoping that like the Canadian price, you know, I live in Canada, it's not priced over $350 because I can't buy it if it's over $350. Like I'm a broke college student like I'm hoping to buy this uh, Nintendo Switch during like Christmas time or something when like the price is on sale like it's lower than $300 and I can buy it then. Um, secondly, no concrete estimate for battery life which is a bit concerning. 
Uh, hopefully, we can get some battery te uh, life tests when the Nintendo Switch comes out, so we can get like a concrete average battery life. So hopefully, over three hours of battery life for the Nintendo Switch tablet. Uh, also, Joy-Con colors and wrist straps and other accessories are going to make a lot of money for Nintendo. Like, a lot of money. Like, just look at Amiibo and how much money they're making with Amiibo. I feel like they made more money with Amiibo than they ever did with the Wii U games. So, or Wii U console sales. Because I think they only sold like 12 million uh, Wii U's over its lifetime. They probably sold like over 6 million Amiibos in like the year or two that they came out. So, yeah. Accessories are going to be making a lot of money for Nintendo. In terms of games, uh, we only have two games in this presentation confirmed for launch date, which is 1-2-Switch and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So hopefully we're getting another presentation where we get the complete launch lineup because I can't uh, believe if that there are only going to be two games for launch lineup. So we're probably going to get some third-party games at launch lineup, some more first-party games. So yeah, Nintendo. We need like... Uh, New Direct in February to tell us the launch lineup. And uh, we got some third party games uh, being developed, but we didn't get a lot of specifics. We just got like a few statements from some third party representatives. And um, one major thing that people were probably expecting is that we didn't get any specifics like the processing or graphical power of the Nintendo Switch. But I ex basically expected that since Nintendo would never like explicitly release those hardware specs. In a presentation, that's something like um, NVIDIA, Sony, or Microsoft would do. Probably will need like game developers to publicly release those specs for Nintendo Switch when it comes out. But Nintendo would never publicly say that in a presentation. So personally, it, for games, I would have loved to see Smash Brothers or Pokemon for Nintendo Switch. Those would be my top two games I wish I could have for Nintendo Switch. But we didn't get to see either of those in that presentation, so it's fine. Um, overall, I was really hyped for this presentation, and the presentation was slightly underwhelming. Uh, I didn't, we, I didn't, we didn't get to see as many games as I hoped. But overall, I'm still happy about Nintendo Switch. I'm grateful that we got all this information, and I'm hoping for Nintendo's success when Nintendo Switch comes out. So, what do you guys think about about the Nintendo Switch presentation? Uh, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.